hi everyone a big welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm coming at you with a new releases video for the second half of the year i'm going to talk about all of my most anticipated releases and favorite releases that i've already read from july to december i love filming these videos just so much good stuff all in one video as always i'm going to be talking about books across literary fiction commercial fiction non-fiction short stories poetry and ya a massive thank you to all of the publishers who have sent me advanced copies of all of these books you make my life so good i've already read a few of these i am massively excited to read the rest please chat to me down below about which of these you're excited to read and any new releases that I may have missed. Let's go. From the 18th of July from W and N we have Same As It Ever Was by Claire Lombardo. This is a contemporary family saga literary novel following protagonist Julia who finds herself on the placid plateau of midlife when people and feelings from her past resurface and she finds herself drawn into turbulent and sometimes destructive behaviours once again. I adore Claire Lombardo, her debut The Most Fun We Ever Had was one of my favourite reads a few years ago so I was massively anticipating this. Delighted and relieved to say that this did not let me down one bit. She absolutely hit it again. She nails messy, painful, joyful family relationships and she's proving to be one of my favourite ever family saga novelists. From the 6th of August from And Other Stories we have Mammoth by Eva Baltazar translated by Julia Sanchez. Translated from the Catalan this is a short literary fiction novel set in an isolated farmhouse deep in the countryside. It follows the story of a disenchanted young lesbian and explores themes of queer parenthood and survival and purpose. I adore Eva Baltazar, she is one of the best writers in translation today. Her earlier novel Boulder blew my mind in 2022 and in here she delivers again. This is unflinching and precise. It has a wildness and rawness to it. Crazy exciting writing. Also shout out to the beautiful Eva Baltazar covers. From the 8th of August from Chatham and Windus we have Bluff by Denez Smith. Their first work published since Covid and the protests in Minneapolis. This collection explores violence, guilt, shame and critical pessimism, wondering how we can strive toward a new existence in a world that seems to be dissolving into desolate futures. Denise Smith is one of my favourite ever poets. I will continue to recommend their debut work Don't Call Us Dead to everyone. I am certain this is going to be brilliant and punchy and deeply affecting. As with everything they write, I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy of this. From the 15th of August from Doubleday we have Donal Ryan's Heart Be At Peace. This is an Irish literary novel set in a small rural village post-economic collapse as 21 locals look to the future. It can be read as a standalone or as a companion to Donal Ryan's debut, The Spinning Heart. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the whole year. Donal Ryan is one of my favourite ever authors. I have read a bunch of his novels at this point. I will continue to read everything he writes. Nobody writes as perceptively and as generously about human beings. This is exquisite and heartfelt and tender with a delicious undercurrent of tension running throughout. Also from the 15th of August, this one from Bloomsbury Children's, we have Not For The Faint Of Heart by Lex Croucher. This is a queer historical YA romance telling the story of the perpetually grumpy granddaughter of Robin Hood and the annoyingly chirpy girl who she accidentally kidnaps. 
I love Lex Crouch's queer historical retellings. I absolutely loved Gwen and Art are not in love and I was really excited to hear that she was bringing out something in the same vein. I hope this will be thrilling and swoony and hilarious. Can't wait to read this one very soon. From the 29th of August from the Borough Press, we have The Abandoners by Begona Gomez Yerzes, translated by Lizzie Davis. Translated from Spanish, this is a non-fiction book exploring a variety of famous and fictional artistic women who all overcame society's judgment and their own maternal instincts in order to leave their children. This was born out of Begona's fascination with her own personal prejudice against these women, so clearly tied up in a wider cultural bias. I'm really interested in books exploring parenthood and motherhood specifically, and this sounded really interesting. And for whatever reason, I very rarely read nonfiction that's translated, so I'm really excited to give this a go. From the 29th of August from Picador, we have My Good Bright Wolf by Sarah Moss. This is Sarah Moss's new memoir, described as an unflinching examination of the narratives surrounding women and food, and the way our healthcare system continues to discount the experiences of women and minorities and people suffering from mental illness. I adore Sarah Moss. She is another of my favourite contemporary writers. Her novels are short and razor sharp. They always pack a punch. I love a good memoir every now and again. I'm excited to learn more about this woman and also just experience more of her writing. I'll take it wherever I can get it. Coming on the 5th of September from Atlantic Book, we have Our London Lives by Christine Dwyer Hickey. This is an epic literary love story set in the 1970s in London, following two Irish outsiders seeking refuge. Millie, a teenage runaway, and Pip, a young boxer filled with anger and potential. Over the decades, their lives follow different paths, occasionally interweaving, leading up to 40 years from when they first met. This book screams me all over. It is said to be dark and brave, a rich, moving portrait of an ever-changing city, a profound inquiry into character and loneliness and the nature of love. What could be better? Also coming on the 5th of September from Fairlight Books, is Please Fear Me by Jennifer Love. This is a literary novel following 16 year old Smidge who is on the run through the underbelly of America harboring a secret. When she meets a travelling circus filled with outsiders and drifters and her best friend falls under the spell of the ringleader, Smidge learns that belonging comes with a price. This grabbed my attention from the off. It is said to explore family ties and addiction and survival. I really like something grittier every now and again. I'm really hoping this is going to pack a punch. Coming on the 12th of September from Pushkin Press, we have Untold Lessons by Madalena Vaglio Tanit. This is a literary mystery novel following a teacher who goes missing in the vast wilderness of the local woods before a local child stumbles across her hiding place. This sounds really intriguing to me. I believe it is about community and what it means to return to ourselves. I'm hoping for lush, mesmerising, intense writing. I really like the sound of the setting. Excited to pick this up soon for something a bit more suspense fueled. Coming on the 12th of September from Dead Ink Book, we have A Scarab Where the Heart Should Be by Marieke Big. This is a literary novel following Jackie the Beetle Mackenzie. Belligerent, weird, 
obsessive, angry, and volatile. Plus her husband Mark and girlfriend Clarissa who are wondering which of them she will push too far first. I really like Marietti Big. I first read her book Waiting for Ted a couple of years ago. Her writing and dead ink books together is a match made in heaven. The weird and unnerving vibes are on point. This sounds intriguing and messy. I am looking forward to going along for the ride. Coming on the 12th of September from Fourth Estate is The Wickedest by Caleb Femi. This is a poetry collection giving a minute by minute account of one night at a monthly house party in a working class neighbourhood. It is said to be filled with a vivid cast of characters, young and old, all coming together through a joint sense of community and desire and jubilant defiance. I am ashamed to say that I have never read a full collection from Caleb Femi and I need to put that right. Apparently there's a range of forms in here from more classical English sonnets to more experimental forms interwoven with photographs and text messages. This sounds awesome. Also coming on the 12th of September, it's a big day for publishing. <laughs> this one from Pan Macmillan, we have Signs Music by Raymond Antrobus. This is another poetry collection, this one structured through a two-part sequence poem showing the before and after of becoming a father, including the cognitive and emotional dissonance between the hypothetical and the reality of it, and the ways in which our own parents influence the parents we become. I really enjoyed Raymond Antrobus's debut collection, the Perseverance, and as mentioned earlier, I love a book exploring parenthood. This is said to be searching and bright and deeply rooted. Really high hopes for this one. Coming on the 24th of September from Faber, we have Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. I couldn't not mention this one, could I? <laughs> this is a literary novel set in Dublin following brothers Peter and Ivan. One one a successful Dublin lawyer, the other a socially awkward competitive chess player. When their father dies and they have to navigate the interlude of recent bereavement. I really like Sally Rooney. I didn't love her most recent novel, Beautiful World Where Are You, as much as I loved Normal People. And honestly, I'm not really expecting to like this one as much either. I'm also not entirely sure when I will read this, just because the bereavement of a father theme still feels a bit too triggering for me. But I'm definitely anticipating it and I will definitely be reading it at some point. Coming on the 26th of September from Hutchinson Heinemann, we have Playground by Richard Powers. Currently longlisted for the Booker Prize, this is a literary novel set on an island in French Polynesia, where the residents must vote to greenlight a project to send floating autonomous cities out onto the open sea. This book is getting a lot of hype at the moment, Richard Powers is truly an exceptional writer. Bewilderment was one of my favourite reads a couple of years ago. It was beautiful and ambitious and filled with ideas. I've got really high expectations for this one, but I think it's going to require some serious concentration. <laughs> Coming on the 26th of September from Daunt Books is A Spring of Love by Celia Dale. This is a re-release originally published in 1960. It follows the story of 30-year-old Esther who lives a ordered routine mundane life with her grandmother before she meets Raymond. Raymond makes her feel truly alive for the first time before she finds out something truly horrifying about him that threatens to shatter everything. I first read Celia Dale when Daunt Books re-released her book A Helping Hand a couple of years ago and I fell in love. Her writing is cutting and dark and delicious. It is dry 
and super hilarious. Think mundane suburban terror. I've heard brilliant things about this. I know it won't disappoint. Coming on the 26th of September from Fitzcarraldo Editions, we have The Impusium by Olga Tokazuk. Translated from Polish by Antonia Lloyd-Jones, this is set in 1930s Western Poland, when a young student suffering from tuberculosis comes to a health resort, and shocking stories from the nearby highlands begin to emerge. I read Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokazuk a couple of years ago, and I found it to be so intriguing and exciting. This also sounds super unique, apparently blending horror and comedy and folklore and feminist parable. What's not to love? Coming on the 1st of October from And Other Stories, is Fire Exit by Morgan Tolte. This is a literary novel following Charles, a lone white man living beside a river on the edge of a reservation in Maine, looking across the water to where his half-native daughter has grown up, completely unaware of his existence in order to protect her tribal identity. I love the sound of this. I am intrigued by the setting. I think it's going to be beautiful. Themes of family and bloodlines and culture and inheritance really interest me. I'm also seeing really great things about this and And Other Stories are a brilliant publisher. Coming on the 10th of October from Dead Ink Books is Jackal by Erin E. Adams. This is a horror, mystery, thriller literary book following a black woman as she returns to her predominantly white Rust Belt hometown in Pennsylvania for her friend's wedding when a young black girl goes missing in the woods. And this isn't the first time this has happened. Children have been going missing in these woods for years, all of them black, all of them girls. I am so excited for this. I love dark, twisty books every now and again, especially when they dig into community secrets. This has me hooked. I will be reading this during spooky season. Coming on the 11th of October from Fly on the Wall Press, we have Modern Gothic. This is a gothic short story collection blurring the lines between dreams and reality, featuring landlords with sinister requests, ethereal housemates, and a glass-encased jungle built by an eccentric father. I've heard great things about this. It is said to be for lovers of eerie, atmospheric, quintessentially gothic tales, so that's a big tick. Just waiting for the weather to get a bit colder and then I will be diving right in. On the 17th of October from the Indigo Press we have My Favourite by Sarah Jolien Fardell, translated by Holly James. Translated from French, this is set high up in the mountains of 1970s Switzerland. It follows the story of a young girl who is abused by her father, a secret that is kept by the local village doctor, before she goes away to boarding school and is triggered by an unbearable replica of the violence that started it all. This is pitched as a powerful exploration of departure and return, love, shame and guilt, and the paralyzing effects of trauma. I'm hoping it's going to be really effective. I am always looking to explore new women in translation. Coming on the 25th of October from HQ, we have The Christmas Cottage by Sarah Morgan. This wouldn't be an anticipated releases video for the end of the year if it didn't feature a Christmas romance from Sarah Morgan. This follows Imogen, a highly competent and busy work professional who after making a catastrophic mistake at work is invited to spend Christmas at an idyllic country cottage. She settles into the Cotswolds cottage life very quickly, but when long-buried secrets and faces from her past show up, 
her new peace is threatened. I just adore a Sarah Morgan Christmas book. She brings them out every single year and every single year I read one. They are just perfect. The perfect blend of character and plot and heartwarming themes, so reliable and cozy and lovely. I can't wait. Coming on the 7th of November from Faber, we have She's Always Hungry by Eliza Clark. This comprises 10 dark, visceral short stories ranging from teenage urban fantasies to dystopian, each bursting with unexpected and unsatiable intruders into bodies communities and ecosystems. I was really really excited to see this announced. I read and adored Eliza Clark's debut Penance last year. She is such an inventive and fresh writer. I'm expecting this to be full of grit and delicious imagery you can really sink your teeth into. Can't wait to read it. And how lush is this pink cover? Coming on the 7th of November from Grove Press, we have Brightly Shining by Ingvild Rishoy, translated from Norwegian by Caroline White. This follows two sisters, Melissa and Ronya, when their father's irresistible pull at the local pub has him abandon all responsibilities, and Melissa takes up local work selling Christmas trees, dreaming of brighter and kinder places. I believe that this is somewhat of a modern classic in Norway, and it sounds right up my street. I love Norway and Norwegian literature. I love Christmas and anything snowy, and this sounds like it's going to be really character focused as well. I'm really looking forward to this one. Coming on the 14th of November from Hodder Children's, we have Rani Chaudhry Must Die by Adiba Jaigadar. This is an enemies to lovers sapphic YA romance following Megan and Rani two enemies who used to be best friends, when they are brought back together in their joint venture of exposing Zack as the cheater he is. Adiba Jaigadar is one of my favourite YA writers. Pick up any of her books, honestly. They're all so good, so sweet and funny and full of heart. Naturally, I was delighted to see her bringing out a new book, I am sure it's going to be great. And finally, coming on the 28th of November from Nine Arches Press, we have Blackbird Singing at Dusk by Wendy Pratt. This is a contemporary poetry collection exploring our place in nature, rural working class identity, the female body, and the repetitive nature of time. Nine Arches Press are one of my go-tos for exploring contemporary poetry. I love discovering new poets and new voices through them, and the themes in this one particularly grabbed my attention they are right up my street. And breathe. There we go guys, those were all of my most anticipated and favourite releases from the second half of 2024. I feel like I have been talking for fucking ages. <laughs> I really hope you all enjoyed watching, I hope you discovered some new books that you're excited to read. Please let me know what you're most looking forward to reading in the second half of this year, tell me about any new releases that I've missed off this list. I can't wait to chat as always, I really do appreciate it and really enjoy it when you guys chat to me in the comments. So thank you and I hope you're all well and I will hopefully see you very soon in a new video. Bye guys!